Master Roshi kicking ass and taking names. So the final chapter of this three chapter teaser for Dragon Ball Z Fukatsu no F. Honestly, the fighting is where things started to get messy with this one because if you look at the power scales and everything, you have to question many different aspects of what the hell is going on. So these are Frieza's soldiers, and to be honest with you, it looks like Frieza just grabbed because he was in a quick rush any scrubs that would listen to him or any remnants of his army. And you got to think to yourself, remember, this is the same guy that he had the Ginyu Force and he had some elites. But the people he has with him have to be certain ones anyway, a tenth at the very least of Raditz in order for Master Roshi to be putting in any work. Because Master Roshi, we know, I believe his power level was like 100 and something. Maybe when he does the bulky form, it's like 200, 300 or something along the lines of that. But Master Roshi is nowhere near even like Raditz's level or Cybermen, you know, Cybermen that was the same level as Raditz. But he's owning motherfuckers left and right, which I ain't gonna lie, as fan service of like, holy shit, that's awesome. But when you start looking at it, it's like, so these are bums. They're bums because Master Roshi is like, you know, a lower level person. But then at the same time, you're looking at the chapter and you see certain aspects. Gohan is struggling. How is Gohan, for a small period, very small, struggling in his base form and Master Roshi is kicking ass and taking names? And by the way, I totally called it. I didn't call Bulma, but I totally called it. That was Chaco. I was thinking to myself, I was like, hey, wait a minute. He's going to be in this movie, so maybe. And yeah, and I was surprised as well that even Jocko was kicking ass. So I'm curious exactly how strong Jocko is. I don't think he's that strong because he was so scared of Frieza. And to this point, he didn't really know that Frieza had this giant jump or whatever. And I'm curious as to how he knew. Again, hopefully when the movie comes out, we just get so much loads of exposition that fills in blanks. Like, how would Jocko know? Are we going to get a mention of Bulma's relative that disappeared in the Jocko the Patrolman prequel manga? There's a lot of little pieces or whatever that I'm really hoping this movie can fill in so that ultimately it makes a lot more sense and is more cohesive. I mean, even in the fighting yet again, going back to that, it looked like Krillin wasn't really struggling, neither was Tien. So I gotta ask, either A, Gohan is just so rusty that he doesn't even remember really how to fight like that, his senses are completely off, or something's afoot. I don't know if they just don't like Gohan, but I mean, I don't give a fuck. Like, when I was a kid, I looked up to that motherfucker. When he went out there and he went up to Majin Buu and everything, I looked up to that dude as a kid. So, when I see this now, it's almost heartbreaking to see that even Master Roshi is putting in more work. Now, granted, when he went Super Saiyan, Frieza did make the remark, Son Gohan could easily, you know, do this all by himself. So... I don't get it, why is it that he was struggling prior to that, but then going Super Saiyan, he could do that. And then at the same time also, you gotta wonder, has Gohan gotten so weak that base form Frieza, or has base form Frieza gotten so strong that he can't take him out? Because they asked him, I think Krillin asked him, hey, do you think you'd be able to take on Frieza? And he's like, no, he's from, cut from a whole different cloth. So that means that base form Frieza is enough to make Gohan get scared. Where is the power at that particular point? Has base form Frieza gone surpassed what Gohan was even during the Buu arc? Or has Gohan regressed so far down that his Super Saiyan power up isn't even much compared to like, where's Gohan's power? That definitely is another huge question and problem I have with this one. I think that's one of the things where it's like, since we know about power levels and we've known about them for a while, it makes you question exactly what's going on. And I love how we got Vegeta's little remark. He's like, hey, it's just Frieza. Why are they so worried or whatever? It's like, yeah, you, you don't know what he's been doing. And then as far as the threat goes of Frieza, when Goku shows up, he immediately takes him on and he's like, oh, me being in my base form is more than enough. And Frieza goes into his final form. Not his golden form, but, you know, the final form that he used when he fought Goku back on Planet Namek or whatever. And in his base form, he kicks the living shit out of him. So, we know that he's going to have that golden power-up for him, and obviously this ends off on a cliffhanger, go watch the movie or whatever, which I expected much, it's not going to give you the entirety of what's, you know, to happen, it's supposed to be a teaser, which is cool or whatever, and I think this provided a lot of fan service, and I don't mean, you know, tits and ass, not that type of fan service, what I'm referring to is, it provided seeing the Z-Warriors going at it, seeing like Frieza again, one of the most popular Dragon Ball Z villains, getting that type of fan service, however... It was at the cost of certain aspects. Because again, why is in certain parts Gohan even attempting to struggle against these people 
when he was at one point, especially towards the end of the series, one of the strongest warriors. And then what type of trash is Frieza running with these days where, again, Master Roshi's cool as shit. We love Master Roshi. He, he was that old motherfucker that we looked up to when we were little. But how is he putting in work against Frieza's soldiers unless they're like, Again, a tenth of Raditz, which Raditz was a low-class Saiyan at that. And if Frieza's final form, this golden form, is so special, but yet he couldn't even in his final form, you know, the prior final form, take out Goku, then how much of a big jump is this going to be? Because you got to think about it. If Goku in his base form was already kicking Frieza's ass, let's just say he gets a big multiplier by going into this golden form, how big of a jump is that going to be? Because wouldn't it be able to be, you know, put down easily if Goku just went Super Saiyan 3, for example. So why would he need that, you know, blue-haired form, and why would he even have to struggle at that point if in base form he was kicking his ass, and yeah, okay, he has a power-up, but how big is this power-up that all the forms of Super Saiyan won't even be able to keep up with it? So that definitely had me questioning as well. I think the biggest thing that this did, the flaw with everything, is the power levels. Honestly, it just feels like it's hard to understand what's going on. Was it that Gohan was taking far stronger soldiers while Roshi was taking the weaker ones and Krillin and Tien had little weaker ones as well? And if Gohan was capable of taking all of them out on his own, then why didn't he just do that? Wouldn't, like, one Kamehameha suffice? Like, why? <laughs> like, is he just like, yo, Roshi, I want to see the muscles. Like, wh what's going on? So, yeah, to be honest with you, I'm really hoping we get better explanations and better exposition in the movie that explains things. Like, maybe Gohan will say, those right there are the strong ones. Roshi, you can take those. They're, they're, you know, you'll be able to take them on. Or is it that Roshi caught them by surprise? And that's the humor of it, which I, I can understand that. If it's supposed to be humorous, it's like Roshi's doing shit and he caught them by surprise some old man then I can understand that as well because at the end of the day Dragon Ball Z isn't 100% serious there is comedy aspects to it so maybe that's what it is but yeah honestly I just it just felt too much it just felt too all over the place with the fighting not that it wasn't awesome because honestly just i can't wait to see that actually emotion goku versus frieza and roshi going in and you know the z warriors at it again because at the end of the day that's our childhood but from a more sensical standpoint it's just like this is all over the place and not to mention it is a fucking huge cock tease that we gotta wait now until the summertime when the movie premieres in the u.s and other places in order to finally see what the hell happens but yeah as far as this whole thing goes it definitely just it was too rushed, honestly. I think that the movie's going to fill in all these gaps and then some, like, I would have liked to see Frieza's training yet again or even a flashback or two of Frieza, like, bloody somewhere on a planet far in the distant galaxy training or whatever so that way when he comes back, it's like, yo, he went through some shit to get this power. And can anyone explain how Goku base form was kicking Frieza's ass but he's going to get one transformation and be stronger than all the forms of Super Saiyan? So as you can tell, yeah, I'm a little bit disappointed with this Chapter 3 in that aspect. Fan service-wise... As a fan, I loved seeing the Warriors going in, but as a reviewer, meh. Any overall thoughts of this three mini chapters teaser thingy majig? Did you like it? Did you hate it? How do you feel about it? And what are your thoughts on the power levels? But that's all I have for this review. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you liked anything I had to say or enjoyed the video, drop me a like. I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed, if you do so as well, that'd be amazing. I'm Fenebworld, and as always, people, have an awesome day.